Over time, as more and more programming languages have been developed, they often borrow from predecessors, so you'll often see similarities in syntax to previous languages. As more and more languages develop, some of them start to branch out in other ways, and you might see different strands developing, although they might have a common ancestor way back when. Now, we're not going to go through every language, because, well, there's a lot of them, so we'll probably go through a few hundred in this series. But the other thing, too, is you can't always find enough documentation on some of the previous languages, just depending on how commonly used they were, and how well documented they were, and whether or not they're still used at all today. If I could find a Hello World in a language, or if I could find enough documentation to believe that I could accurately create a Hello World, then it's been included. We start with Conrad Zeus, and you can see his language looks quite a bit different. Then, we move to Fortran, and you can already start seeing similar constructs to what we might use now. COBOL is cool. You can see the committee there with Grace Hopper in the bottom. IBM RPG, showing IBM's early involvement in languages. You can start to see on the bottom this track of different languages that are being influenced by previous languages, and they often go back to a lot of the same predecessors. You can see here a lot of these also have multiple versions, so now we see another version of Fortran, we saw another version of COBOL already, multiple versions of ALGOL are being credited. Some languages are credited to just one or two people, others to whole teams of people. There were quite a few languages attributed to the Admiral Grace Hopper that I mentioned back with COBOL, but unfortunately I couldn't find Hello World on very many of them. Some of these are very simple, like Snowball. Others are quite a bit more complex. Some of these, like Basic, Fortran, and Algol, are long-running languages that are still used today. But other ones might have been used for only a short period of time or for very specific uses, and might be more or less unheard of by a majority of programmers. It should be pretty clear already that even a lot of the modern syntax we use in languages now has a long history and isn't that different from a lot of the older languages. Now, of course, there are some exceptions, right? Uh, but for the most part, it's pretty simple. Even these old languages are pretty legible for the most part, although some are a little weird. There are some things in here, like EOF, that's end of file, right? So some of these, if you know what the abbreviations mean, it is fairly legible. Some of these long-running languages like Algol that have so many iterations does make it look like they have a larger handle on much of the development of programming than they actually do. I mean, they are important, and they did influence it a lot, but because there were so many iterations of these languages used, and they were so widely used, it was much easier to find documentation on them than some of the other ones. So there are a lot of other ones that are not listed. Here we see the B language, which includes contributor Dennis Ritchie, who will then be the one who creates the C language, which of course C is like the predecessor of like almost all modern languages now. Some of these are credited to locations or schools or businesses and not individuals. Just as not all the languages have the same level of documentation, the same is with their contributors. Some you can find a ton on, like almost their whole life story. Others you can't find anything. Some of them not even like where they're from or where they went to school or anything really. There's the C language with Dennis Ritchie again. This was actually the first language to have Hello World in its documentation. Intercal is probably the first esoteric language with being a bit of a joke actually having the word please in the language itself and requiring the word please in the language itself. SQL is the most well-known database language and modern iterations are still widely used today. Then we move into COMOL and ML, which is, ML was actually a fairly original-ish language. CLU looks quite a bit different from some of the others. GRASS was the language used in the original Star Wars to create the graphic scene in the briefing room. Scheme is still fairly important today with modern iterations. And we'll lastly wrap up this video with Altair Basic with Bill Gates and Paul Allen.